so for the uh, afternoon talk with the UI2D, uh, he will uh, tell us from uh, Riken, and he will tell us about the protocol hierarchy from uh, coupled wires. Yeah, uh, thank you for introduction, uh, record. So, uh, as always, so I first would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity in a nice place, uh, especially the Gregor Thierry and uh, Philip Samuels. So, today I will talk about uh, the, our recent study about uh, the quantum hole hierarchy physics in the couple way approach. So, the, does the mic turning on? Is that working? Okay. Uh, so again, so in the morning, so you may attend the, the case gate talk, but also again, also about couple wires. So I'm now going more as to the what is the physics behind the couple wires, uh, based on the what is known in the uh, more the more conventional literature, the Landau levels or Chernstein theory. So let's begin. All right. So this is a the outline of my talk. First, I maybe it's not very uh, necessary, but I start with uh, what is fraction on our state. Of course, you are ex already expert on those stuff. And then we will go to the, the what is the quantum hole hierarchy. Uh, that is basically constructed around the, the celebrated Laughlin state. And then to understand those hierarchy, we also need the our uh, some concept of the flux attachment, also vortex duality that I will introduce for now. And then I briefly watched the, what the chance time theory to describe fraction of the whole state and also edge state. And then we uh, go to the, uh, the main uh, subject uh, to understand the physics in terms of couple wire approach. And from this, so we can understand, for example, Jane state or Harden Halpern hierarchy state and also uh, Maybe I'm not sure that uh, we have uh, enough time, but uh, I can also explain the particle conjugate in this approach, also the composite family gate, and also the Moore Fafian state. All right, so the fraction of the state that you already know in the, your, uh, probably the elementary school study, uh, that is a Nobel Prize in the physics in the 1998, and the phenomena is basically the, uh, you, you have the 2D electron gas in the subject to the magnetic field, and the, you measure the, the whole resistivity here, but the, you can also consider the, the inverse of that is uh, basically the whole conductance. And uh, applying the magnetic field, you have the many uh, plateaus in the whole resistance, and that's actually corresponding to the uh, some of them is corresponding to the, the integer value, that is the integer quantum whole state, that is also the Nobel Prize in the, given to the von Critting. But there are also many other protos, it takes the fractional value P over Q, and that is, uh, uh, we will see, it's related to the thing fraction, that very uh, fundamental quantity in this uh, fractional total state physics. So now, let's start from the physics of Landau level, and so, in the electron in the magnetic field from the this quantized level of the lambda level. And let's imagine that uh, the all the electrons completely occupy the lowest uh, lambda level. And this uh, state is known to be very, very robust to the Coulomb interaction. So basically the single particle ground state is uh, uh, the good description for this integer quantum hole state uh, for which the Filling fraction is now given by integer and uh, gives our integer whole conductance. So, integer quantum whole state, okay, basically we can understand everything in terms of single particle. However, so once we consider the partially field on the level, the partially field on the level is a macroscopically degenerate, so that uh, once you perturbate by a Coulomb interaction, you find that uh, immediately the perturbation theory to this partially field on the level is break down. So then, the clue to understand the thing fraction, uh, say one third or one fifth, uh, the just uh, Laughlin came across the idea of the, okay, let's imagine the, the electron take this form of the wave function. And then this wave function is given like this. So it's basically a polynomial of the uh, Z, and the Z is a 2D coordinate in the complex plane. 
And L0 here that I take the square root of B in the some natural unit. This is magnetic length. And then taking this of a function, you will find that the, uh, if the two electrons come in together, uh, this wave function vanishes as the poly principle dictates. But uh, the, the somehow the electron feels a very strong interaction more than usual free electron because this power of m for the one third or one fifth m is odd integer so that the, this wave function is anti-symmetric as the Fermi wave function should. And so he found that this is a very nice variation of wave function to describe the, the 2D electron gas in the Coulomb uh, interaction. And uh, of course, I need a caveat since I say it's variation wave function, but actually there is no variation parameter in this wave function. So that uh, theory that this wave function uh, excellently uh, describes the, the, uh, the, the actual ground state of the, the Coulomb gas, the 2D Coulomb gas. All right. So what, uh, just having wave function, what should I do next? So we don't have uh, any, uh, we want some clue to uh, deeply understand the physics or so get more physical insight from uh, this roughing wave function to proceed uh, to in investigate our more uh, fundamental physics. Uh, okay, before that, so I should tell that uh, this uh, roughing wave function has uh, some interesting properties that these are, we can examine the elementary excitations that are quasi hole or quasi electron from this roughing wave function. This uh, quasi particle wave function just, say quasi hole is just uh, written, wave function is written like this, taking roughing state and take another coordinate for the quasi hole and multiply uh, uh, this factor and consider them, well, this kind of polynomial. And what uh, Laughlin found is that, okay, this quasi particle carries a one over n, that the fractionalized value of the, elect the charge for the electrons. So that it means the elementary particle in this uh, Laughlin, uh, Laughlin state is uh, actually has a fractionalized uh, quasi particle as elementary excitation. Also, it's not just uh, the electron is fractional, a charge is fractionalized, but this quasi particle actually has a fractional statistics that can be seen by taking the, now you excite two quasi holes at the eta one and eta two, and you, suck, uh, you saturate the one uh, quasi particle around the another, then now you can calculate the holonomy around this, uh, around this uh, uh, adiabatic. Uh, change the wave function that gives you the, the on top of the Aharonov uh, bomb flux, which counts for the one over m charge. Uh, you also find that the addition of additional factor. This is uh, intrinsically coming from the fractional statistics of the quasi particle. So that the Laughlin wave function has uh, the elementary excitation, which for the fractional statistics, and in, as a consequence, it has a fractional charge. All right. So now we can understand, okay, the, the single particle or picture gives you the nice understanding of integer quantum whole state. And also one third or some other two third or four third and other uh, fractional value, the plateau can be understood, can be understood in terms of Laughlin state. That's fine. But uh, you will see there are uh, more another plateau like two fifths, three sevenths and so on. And this cannot be understood in the just taking the Laughlin wave function. That's that we want to do. That uh, we want to investigate, and given uh, some insight, a more deep physical insight to the Laughlin state. And uh, okay, four by seven. That's some more mysterious stuff. All right. So so to gain more physical insight uh, for the Laughlin state, so we uh, now uh, introduce the concept of the flux attachment. That gives you the more nearly free particle picture to the Laughlin state with your familiar electron or boson. So that is uh, you now attach, uh, taking a particle, now we consider electrons and bind the, the flux counter to the, those uh, electrons. Then that's, this is called flux attachment and this gives uh, you some new composite particle. For example, if you bind the electron and then even number of flux counter, that gives you the, the composite fermion, as it's some fermionic object. If you attach the odd number of flux counter to electrons, you will get the composite boson. 
So now you change the statistics from a, the fermion to boson in this case. So this can be easily seen by you examining the, the holomorph bomb flux. Since you now attach the flux to the electron, and uh, if you uh, take those two and commute, commute in there, uh, so circle, so, so, so make the not to go around, just exchange two particles, then you get the holomorph flux corresponding to the m pi, and uh, this change the statistics or from the uh, original electron to boson in the case of auto flux counter, but for even flux counter, you still get the fermionic statistics. Okay, now taking that this uh, picture, so let's see the, what's going on in the, the Laughlin state. Here, so we first start from the integer counter whole state at the mu equal one. Now the, there is a one flux counter for the uh, one electron, so there's a station like this in the 2D electron gas. Imagine this is 2D electron gas with the uh, uh, same number of electrons in the flux counter. And the considering the one third state now, so there is a three flux counter for the, the one electron. And then let's consider the attaching the two flux counter to each electron. And now you can see that the, these composite, ob composite objects, uh, the number of the composite object is equal to the number of flux counter. So that the composite fermions are effectively in the thing fraction one. So uh, this is fermionic object, so you can make it to the integer quantum whole state. On the other hand, so if you attach the three flux counter to each electron, then now you don't find any magnetic or uh, flux counter is left. So that the effectively these composite bosons see the zero magnetic field. So then you can condense as usual. Okay, this is a this is a heuristic picture of the one third Laughlin state. And then uh, now we go proceed to the two fifths. Then how we can think is that, uh, okay, let's imagine the 2D electron gas. With, uh, now there is a uh, five flux counter for the two electrons. And uh, as I did previously, so let's attach uh, the two flux counter to uh, each electron. Then now for each uh, composite object, uh, okay, so for the, the remaining the flux counter, one flux counter, there's two uh, composite objects, that's a fermion. So that this effectively uh, gives a thing fraction two for the composite fermion, so you can again uh, make them to be in their integer quantum whole state by filling the uh, lowest two lambda levels. Now, you try to uh, do the same again for the composite bottom picture. Now that you attach three flux counter to electrons, and now you have some, some bare electron, you cannot, uh, you, you don't have enough uh, flux counter to make it composite boson. Now imagine that they're removing the contact flux counter to somewhere else in the 2D electron gas and other sheet. So at some, some point, there's some uh, kind of negative flux like stuff in 2D electron gas and you may want to condense the composite bosons, but actually this can, this, times, uh, this time you cannot easily, uh, this cannot, at uh, this time, you cannot uh, uh, naively condense the composite bosom. But instead, what you can condense is, now, uh, where you remove the flux, you, you find uh, the quasi-particle. This time, the quasi-electron, the one star laughing state. And those uh, quasi-electrons somehow form like the bosonic quasi-particles. OK, you believe me? <laughs> we, you will see the why such kind of interpretation comes, though I say that it's fractional statistics they follow. And then those, uh, those quasi-particles, uh, quasi-electrons, uh, see the original uh, electron as if they are the flux. So that now examining the, the counting the number of the, uh, those bosons and the counting number of flux, uh, you will effectively get the free fraction one half. So that those quasi-electrons are in the effective free fraction one half. So now you can condense them into the, the basically the Laughlin state that we're hitting one half. So this composite fermion picture gives you the so-called the Jane's picture. Basically, the, the composite fermion forming are feeding the, the lowest random levels to get uh, some incompressible state. On the, this picture, so you uh, consider the first start from the composite boson condensate and the excite quasi-particle. And the qua we, then you can now condense the quasi-particle into some other Laughlin state. That is called the Harden-Harpen the hierarchy picture. 
And so this is just uh, some heuristic picture. So you should not need to believe this. But, or, but the actual meaning is actually uh, coming into the wave function rather than this kind of picture. So now the Jane uh, proposed that at uh, this uh, thing fraction, p over uh, 2p cubed plus 1, uh, now the composite fermion you can obtain by attaching the 4 pi q flux to the electron. And then uh, this composite fermion uh, forms uh, a field of p lowest under levels. And looking at wave function, he proposed this kind of wave function that is uh, taking the, this is a uh, wave function for the p field lambda levels. And this uh, factor gives you the, the, the attaching the uh, 2q flux counter to the electrons. And this, finally, you take the uh, projection to the lowest round level. And this uh, kind of wave function is, uh, okay, this is basically heuristically uh, proposed, but very accurate to describe actual physics in the uh, uh, lambda level in the other than one sub, like two fifths and so on. On the other hand, so there used to be a, a more earlier proposal of the uh, wave function. For example, which uh, first proposed for two, or maybe two fifths, and then the Hardenian Halpenian proposed that uh, uh, what you should do to construct the wave function corresponding to this spin factor is you now start from the one third Laughlin state. Okay, this is a Laughlin wave function for one third. And now we excite our quasi electrons, just you did in the previously. The multiplying factor with the coordinate eta, where the quasi electron there. And then symmetrize them, and now you finally project uh, those uh, quasi electrons into the, uh, this Laughlin one half state like factor. So now you project your uh, you project, uh, quasi electrons into the Laughlin one half state. And you can obtain the, some wave function. This actually this guy, this can also uh, a candidate of the uh, uh, wave function to describe the incompressible state at two fifths. And this can, kind of game can be generalized to the uh, thing function. This takes this form. Now m is a auto integer from starting from electron, and p1, p2 are even integer to make them to uh, to make the quasi electron condensed into the bosonic Laughlin state. In principle, okay. so yeah. The yeah, that that actually, yeah, I think that usually requires a numerical check or some cool on. Yeah, I think there's also investigation like classical plasma mapping of the uh, hierarchy state, and that also works. Okay. Uh, Okay. And so, but uh, uh, even though, let's consider that P1 equal P2 equal 2, in the, that case, uh, the both uh, hierarchy state and the Jane state has the same thing factor, for example, two fifths. But uh, apparently, the wave function looks very different. But uh, uh, what uh, Reed proved is that uh, uh, for the uh, Jane and the hierarchy states where the thing fraction matches, they actually had the same topological order. That means the quasi particle static states is the same. Though they get the different our wave function uh, we can obtain. So now uh, let's go apart from the wave function and uh, let's see at the what uh, feels theoretically or more microscopically what we can do uh, in this kind of uh, picture. So now uh, as uh, you also uh, uh, had in the, in the morning session, uh, that now we uh, introduced the chance times flux attachment. In the now our uh, Hamiltonian is just the, the standard electron uh, Hamiltonian uh, in subject to the Coulomb interaction. And now we want to introduce the electromagnetic field. Then the, this 2 pi m flux attachment is uh, implemented as uh, the chance times gauge field. So usually you first do the, some singular gauge transformation to electron, then uh, to implement uh, some con that constraints uh, 
to bind uh, the electron. Uh, OK, so first, let's see. Uh, now, we uh, denote the, uh, this phi. Cp is uh, the composite particle, which is obtained after the singular gauge transformation. And now, this composite particle coupled not only to the electromagnetic field, but also the some emergent gauge field, the small a0 and small a1, a, the small a. And this small a also has uh, this kind of the chan Simons like term. The coefficient is 1 over m, 4 times 4, minus 1 over 4 pi. And now, the why, why we introduce this, ki this kind of chan Simons term is that the, so now you take the a, the a zero to be just okay, Lagrange multiplier. So you integrate out it. Then you obtain the constraint. So this constraint gives you the uh, the flux of this uh, emerge, some this uh, fluctuating gauge field that uh, emerge in this uh, composite particle theory. Uh, the flux of this gauge field is tied to the the original uh, electron density as a composite particle density is the same as electron density. And then now, if you uh, examine the, what is the effective uh, magnetic field uh, felt by the composite particle, and that is uh, actually reduced by the uh, density times 2 pi m uh, from the original magnetic field. So that the, uh, now uh, the composite particle uh, does feel the uh, magnetic field which is reduced from the original uh, magnetic field. So that, uh, if you appropriately take the strength of mag magnetic field felt by the composite particle, you can make it to the either integer quantum whole state or uh, boson condensate, uh, depending on the your composite particle is Fermi or boson. Okay. Then I want to also introduce the another uh, type of the uh, transformation, uh, which often used to obtain the uh, effective chan Simon theory, but not just uh, the chan Simon's flux attachment I previously showed. Uh, the effective chan Simon theory, uh, which is uh, the, some kind of hydrodynamic description of the fraction of the state. And to get it, so it's convenient to introduce the notion of the vortex duality. So we now take the composite boson view, and we want to make everything condensed, finally. But uh, now, uh, once you, once you uh, switch to the composite boson, uh, you can also uh, think about uh, what is the energetics of the uh, quasi-particle about that. And then those quasi-particles actually can be seen as a vortex once you switch to the composite boson picture and consider the condensate. And now, taking uh, the boson and the then smooth of cha changing the phase of the boson, you, you can create a vortex excitation. And now this is a, basically a dictionary which are uh, connecting the boson picture and vortex picture. So now, so taking the Lagrangian which described the minimal coupling with electromagnetic field, of course the boson current, or the charged boson, uh, the current coupled to the electromagnetic field. In the vortex picture, the, the vortex current uh, doesn't directly couple to the electromagnetic field, but the vortex is not local object, so you need to now introduce a, a dynamical gauge field, alpha, and that flux of alpha coupled to the electromagnetic field. And so then, let's check that the, what this vortex duality uh, means in examining the, uh, some familiar state like both condensate or motor insulator. In the both condensate side, we know that the, the elemental excitation is a gapless course on boson. So that kind of stuff also appears in the vortex side. In the vortex side, the both condensate is understood as a motor insulator vortex. But now, so in a motor insulator, the vortex is completely gapped. That you, we won't still have some gapless excitation as there is a course on mode in the boson side. And that is actually the uh, gauge photon coming from this uh, emergent gauge field. So that has a linear dispersion, that's fine. So it's consistent with Goldstone boson. On the other hand, taking the boson from the motor insulator, there should be excitation gap. And now it can be understood as a condensator vortex. And since there is dynamical gauge field, 
uh, once you form the uh, condensate vortex, the Goldstone mode from that condensate is fixed by the emergent gauge field. So the, all the excitation is gapped. Then, so again, so I want to emphasize that uh, uh, above the composite boson condensate, uh, you can easily, uh, you can naturally create a vortex excitation. In taking the Laughlin state, as I said, that the Laughlin state is a, a condensate of the composite bosons, and the excitation above that is a quasi-particle carrying one third charge or fractional charge, and those can be understood as a vortex excitation. So now you can uh, identify in the composite boson picture the quasi-particle is vortex. Okay, so after, uh, once you uh, switch the composite boson, boson view, uh, you can do the game, like, so forming the uh, composite boson condensate, and in the hierarchy picture, you further excite the quasi-particle, but uh, you can then, again, attach the flux to the quasi-particle and condense them again. So you can repeat this game, and you will end up with the, this kind of effective Chan simon theory, uh, finally, uh, without any matter current. That is a, uh, Yes, uh, the chance time theory, and then the two plus one is uh, this is a kind of the topological quantum field theory, and then taking this chance time theory, uh, one thing uh, more or less we can easily find is the existence of edge state. Taking the manifold of its boundary, at the boundary there must be the uh, chiral edge state, in starting from this chance time theory that's uh, shown by Sharon Wen and even in his textbook. And then, this is not uh, ne very necessary to know, but the in in interesting uh, the outcome from this chance time theory is, okay, so now the boundary state, this boundary state that is uh, usually described by the 2D conformal field theory. And then, what we also show the, the several wave function like Laughlin state previously, but those Laughlin state like wave function can also be understood in terms of this, the same conformal view theory, taking just uh, the March uh, particle, uh, March, March, uh, yeah, March uh, field correlators of the, the same CFD. So this somehow represents some bulk edge correspondence in the topological order. Yeah. So the, the gauge field alpha here is still the one uh, used to represent the vortices in the previous slide? Or uh, yeah, in principle, but it depends yeah. on the, yeah, here is a, the, uh, it actually describes a coupling with uh, the electromagnetic field. Okay. Uh, I should say, it precisely, it depends on the choice of the basis. Yeah, so if we work out in the composite boson picture, what do you usually obtain in the, the some special basis called hierarchy basis? That uh, dictates uh, the coupling between the a gauge field and the original electromagnetic field. So how should I understand the upper uh, index, I and J then, when you have several alpha? Ah, right, so there are several uh, there's components in the alpha. That uh, depends on the what, what kind of uh, fraction of the set you consider. For example, Laughlin state, uh, the chance time theory, is just has single component of gauge field. But if you go to other hierarchy state or Jane state, you, you uh, in principle, you have the many components. Uh, there are many edge states. So does that mean, uh, on the previous picture, that uh, you also have uh, several condensates? Yeah, yeah. So, in the usually in the hierarchy state, you need to successively condense the quasi-particle and the switch in the time to the vortex. So eventually, you need to introduce many gauge fields. Okay. One, uh, whatever you did, apply the vortex theory. Okay, so now, so I take the, the short break, and so now I summarize what we uh, know so far, is that, uh, okay, so we can obtain the, the hierarchy fraction of state, that's uh, going beyond the Laughlin state, uh, is obtained the apparently two different uh, descriptions. Uh, one in the Jane picture, that is uh, the composite fermion obtained by attaching the, attaching the, the even flux counter to electrons, uh, forming the, uh, feeling the uh, lambda levels, like integer quantum state. And the, on the other hand, in the other picture, you now take the composite boson condensate and excite quasi-particle, 
and uh, you now condense those quasi particles into the another roughly state. In the end, so the wave function takes quite different form, but it's known that the, the topological order, if the feeling function is the same, is uh, actually is the same. Then, uh, to access those two physics, uh, you can, as I explained, you can do some construct some trial wave function. But uh, of course, just writing down trial wave functions, you can examine many properties. But uh, it's uh, really uh, coming in the, the actual physics. You need to do some numerical calculation, like exact normalization and so on, to check that so those trial wave functions are actually valid or not. On the other hand, so the doing the chance ions flux attachment, you start with some electron coupled with some fictitious gauge field. And now you, uh, you examine that, okay, whether these composite fermions form the integer quantum host state or not by doing some RPA-like approximation. But uh, those are actually very not controllable. As I first say, that uh, it's in principle that the partial field on the level is uh, uh, not stable against the, uh, the part in the part in the sense of perturbation theory, it's not uh, robust to cool interaction. So there's no good starting point to do that. So basically, uh, those are strong interacting programs, so there's a limited approach to do. Now, today, so I want to focus on the, the couple wire construction. That's uh, actually, so, so far I discussed about some, something going, what's going on in your uh, lambda level physics, but the couple wire construction actually not uh, very uh, starting from the lambda level physics. Just taking the, the bunch of wires and couple them in the magnetic field, then you form now some uh, gapped ground state. That uh, what I want to show from now on is that uh, this approach, even though it looks very different from the lambda level physics, uh, it actually uh, encapsulates uh, the those uh, physical uh, picture in terms of composite boson of fermions, and uh, we can obtain some microscopic Hamiltonian in this approach. So yes, so then we can obtain some microscopic Hamiltonian. So they are written in terms of basically the coupled quantum wires. And then uh, we can manage the strong interaction, not just uh, doing some uh, uh, rough, rough, rough approximation, but like the taking the bosonization technique or conformal field theory, we can handle those interactions in a non perturbative uh, sense sometimes. And also, uh, we can compute, OK, given theory, so we have to compute something. Then that we can do. For example, edge state, quasi-particle statistics, or ground state degeneracy on torus, uh, as you also uh, heard in the morning talk by Keisuke. And uh, we can also construct, OK, not only fractional torus state, but also some symmetric topological phase, uh, fraction topological insulator, and surface topological, and so on. So we can actually uh, play with a couple of wires to construct a bunch of exotic state. But uh, today, I will focus on fractional torus state. And actually, this approach can be applied to uh, two relative systems in some case. So today, I will show that uh, this approach also uh, applies to the uh, also uh, capture the physics of composite fermion bosons. Okay, so now, so now I go into the how 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 the, those physical pictures emerge in the couple wires. So first, uh, I briefly flush the, the what is a locked injury case theory. That's basically describe the effective low energy uh, dynamics of the uh, 1D gapless, spin, uh, gapless systems, like the, the hard core boson, or uh, more interacting fermions, or spin system, and so on. That's uh, all uh, unified into this simple the free boson theory in 1D. The reason is that uh, usually uh, taking the 1D systems, any uh, ex elementary excitation you can create is uh, always need to push the other particle and, and so on and so on. And that means that the uh, excitation is always some collective bosonic excitation in those one system. systems. So that uh, you can write down the effective theory as a free boson theory. And that is gapless theory. And now we introduce the, the phi and theta, those are bosonic fields, which is uh, conjugate to each other. And the physical meaning of phi and theta is that taking the uh, dx theta is this that is a, a density of the original particle, and the dx phi is related to the current of the particle. And now we introduce uh, two coefficients v and u, and this controls basically the interaction 
uh, either repulsive or attractive between the party. And U equal B is for the free fermion case. And uh, uh, now we want to plug this bosonic uh, free, free, free bosonic theory to the, the what's going on in the electronic system. So now taking the quadratic uh, bond of the free fermion in 1D, uh, if, you, you are, if you are interested only in the low energy physics, uh, you can linearize the spectrum on the Fermi level and taking only the right branch of the electron or left branch of the electron at the kf uh, plus kf or minus kf. And by doing, uh, by expanding the Fermi operator around these two branches, uh, you can uh, write the Fermi operator like this. And those Fermi operators uh, can be uh, written in terms of this uh, phi and c, that bosonic field. And now you can prove that uh, taking this kind of commutation relation, those fermionic fields are anti-commuting with each other. And again, the density is related to the dx theta in the bosonic field. So now taking the, the, the bunch of these Lattinger liquids and make the 2D array of the, the, the uh, couple of Lattinger liquids. And now you po pose a magnetic field uh, in the system and so choose the lambda gauge now. Then the electron operator for each wire j is written like this. So now the momentum is uh, shifted by the applied magnetic field. And the electron operator for right or left branch is written like this. So that technically, so we need to introduce the so called the crime factor to ensuring the anti-commutation relation between the different uh, 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 electro electron electron operator is in different uh, wires. Then, uh, when we apply the magnetic field, let's think of what uh, kind of interaction you can put in the system. Uh, as a uh, uh, is yeah, so. For example, let's imagine the tunneling the L one uh, single particle from one wire to neighboring wires. So you get uh, this kind of uh, factor. Uh, the phi basically carries the charge one, but uh, you gain this kind of factor. Well, if you hop the, the particle from one wire to the another, you must feel the magnetic field, of course. So that appears as this factor, the E2 IBX. And x is the coordinate along the wire. And then, since this kind of oscillation, oscillating factor, so if, if you go to the continuum limit, this kind of interaction vanish. So it doesn't matter to the uh, actual low energy physics. But uh, you can also consider the kind of backscattering operators, which is uh, coming from the, some charge density wave fluctuation in each wire. And taking that kind of interaction, uh, you can actually. Uh, in some cases, you can uh, cancel those kind of oscillation factors and that with some interaction which survive in the continuum limit. And this condition uh, precisely gives us the definition of the filling fraction. Since uh, free momenta kf is related to the original uh, electron density, and uh, this condition uh, the, uh, gives that uh, some uh, thing, uh, taking the, uh, OK, so this, first, this condition must be first satisfy that the interaction is non-vanishing. And then you obtain the, take the, this kind of ratio that actually uh, divided by uh, the electron density divided by the flux counter. And that gives a feeling fraction. So, that the in, so given feeling fraction, uh, we should find that the, the, the non-vanishing interaction uh, which starts with a continuum limit. Uh, yes. And now we see the simple example of the laughing state. So taking the, uh, the thing function 1 over q, and q is even for the boson and the odd for the fermion. And this is a, uh, just a particle hopping, and phi minus phi is particle hopping. And we dress this particle hopping by this kind of the uh, backscattering or charge density wave oscillation. Then this kind of tunneling survives in the continuum limit. And what we can do uh, that uh, is that, OK, uh, if we find this kind of tunneling, now we want to introduce some new field. That is a combination of phi and theta, but with a coefficient q in the theta. And this uh, defines a new chiral bosonic field. 
which satisfy the commutation like this. And now the Hamiltonian is simply written like this. So then uh, when the coupling constant g flow to the uh, strong coupling limit, uh, now taking, OK, this is our, the vertical image of a wire system. This is horizontal image, sorry. But uh, uh, now in terms of this new uh, bosonic field, uh, just uh, the right and left uh, bosonic fields are paired up to open a gap but between different wires. And from this picture, it's immediately clear that there's a uh, left going mode or right going mode at left at the boundary. And those uh, edge modes uh, satisfy this commutation relation. And this commutation relation is uh, nothing but uh, what we can find from the Chan Simon theory corresponding to those Laughlin states. So this is the one uh, signature that we actually described the Laughlin state from this couple layer uh, model. And also, uh, we can uh, also examine the, what is a quasi-particle from this Kaplan model that is described by the original electron backscattering operator, which written like this form now. And this tells that so now that you can create a pair of the quasi-particle, but which carries a one over Q charge compared with the original electron. So that we definitely find the fractional charge in our Kaplan models. So now we introduce the uh, idea of fractal attachment to these couple of systems. So the action corresponding to the, the couple of wires, like even like this. Then we taking the or this phi and theta is the original bosonic field. Now we introduce the kind of complicated non-local transformation. Of course, uh, putting this non-local transformation on original action, you you will, be, you, will be, you will be completely messed up. There's a non-local non terms up here everywhere, so you cannot handle anything. But, uh, OK, so first, so the, after this non-local transformation, what you can obtain is uh, depending on the Q. So for even Q, you'll be obtaining some new uh, composite particle, which for the fermionic statistics. And for auto Q, you'll be obtaining some composite particle, which for the bosonic statistics. But, uh, OK, so. This transformation is uh, pretty non-local, but you now introduce uh, some auxiliary field by implementing this uh, subject to this constraint, and this removes the non-local terms in this action when we plug into this ex expression to original boson. And this constraint is nothing but the, the discrete version of the fractal attachment, since A1 minus A, A1, the different wire, is uh, like the magnetic flux uh, created by this fictitious uh, gauge field. And that is tied to the original uh, electron density, which is derivative of theta. And now we implement this constraint via the Lagrange multiplier A0. And um, this, this is Lagrange multiplier term. And uh, resolving this term, what we will find is that uh, minimal coupling uh, for the temporal component with fictitious gauge field and a uh, discrete version of this. Uh, Chan Simon's flux attachment term. So this uh, furnish in our couple system the, uh, how to do the flux attachment. And this is actually uh, taken the idea by the Miro, Alice, and Motonish, those uh, three uh, smart guys in from Kartik. Yeah. So on the line where you the attachment, yes. Ah, A1. J, ah, OK. J, I think, I understand. A, A, A0 is a temporal component okay. of the KHP. So A1, is it along the chain? Or uh, along the chain, yes, along the chain. And okay, so it's X elsewhere. Yeah, so we, and we always work on the A2 equal to 0 gauge in this approach. OK, so then let's look back the the offering state in terms of composite fermion. So now we apply the. OK, so now Q, say Q is 3. So now we apply a 4 pi flux attachment to the Laughlin state. You will obtain the composite fermion. And by applying this, the original interaction now looks like this. And that's the simple, the, uh, the, the argument is just a phi plus theta or uh, phi minus theta in the uh, exponent. And then taking this, you can now define the uh, new electron operators. 
which we say the composite fermion. And now the composite fermion, this uh, interaction looks like just the, the, the hopping of the uh, composite fermion between neighboring wires, but which pair up the uh, right going fermion from one wire and left going from fermion from the different wires. So what you will find is there's some edge mode corresponding to composite fermion. That's pretty much like the integer quantum whole state. So that uh, this uh, represents the Jane picture of the Laughlin state. Now you go to the composite boson picture. You do the same again, but now do the two pi q flux attachments. For the one side, you now the apply the six pi flux attachment. And what do you find? OK, this kind of interaction. So this, this is phi is actually related to the original. Uh, in the original language of phi, is the, for boson, it's just related to the bosonic particle operator. So now you imagine that this can be sort of a the composite boson operator, the particle operator of the composite boson. And then taking this form, this is just a simple composite boson hopping. So now you can make it to the contents. So you will end up with the uh, composite boson condensate. So that this established the composite boson picture of Laughlin state. Then now we further apply the vortex reality to proceed more on the hierarchy state. That is. Uh, again, given by the non-local transformation to this composite boson field, that's just uh, understood as the uh, exchange in the composite boson hopping-like term to be the uh, term which uh, uh, reproduces the uh, charge density wave-like instability to the system once you exponentiate this expression. So this is non-local transformation. Uh, again, so you can make the theory to be uh, local by introducing the fictitious gauge field. But uh, it's complicated. But what you will find now is this new de newly defined boson, uh, bosonic field corresponding to vortex uh, doesn't directly couple to the electromagnetic field, but instead they couple to some fictitious uh, the ima ima some, okay, dynamical gauge field alpha. And this dynamical gauge field alpha uh, has a a discrete analog of the chance sign term takes this kind of form. And flux of alpha couples to the electromagnetic field in this theory. So it's exactly like the vortex duality as you usually done in the continuum limit in both direction to the then applying this vortex duality, what we will find is that uh, just a motor insulator vortex. So the free state just uh, think of as a uh, Motor vortex. This means that the uh, vortex is again the quasi particles, but the quasi particle is now just a gap to excitation about the composite of the condensate. Yes, and what is left in this theory, once we uh, drop out all the vortex field from the theory, what we, you will end up with is this chance ion theory. This is exactly the effective uh, chance ion theory to describe the hydrodynamic, uh, hydrodynamics of the Laughlin state as proposed by uh, Ray and Z. OK, so now we go to the two-fifths. So what we can do is, uh, OK, so now let's just give the Kaplan Hamiltonian. This is supposed to be the two-fifths state. Then uh, to, to see that, so we just examine the, what is edge physics uh, when, once this uh, interaction goes to the strong coupling limit. And so since now it involves the second neighbor hopping of the particle. But once you take the uh, system with boundary, there are two uh, left going modes or two right going modes are left at the edge. Then you now examine the commutation relation of those edge modes that described by this uh, K matrix. Then there is corresponding chance sign theory. And this uh, K matrix is actually uh, related to the what is known in the uh, chance sign theory of the hierarchy construction of this state. So this is uh, just a sanity check. So now let's go to the composite fermion picture of the two fifth state. We just do the repeat the same again. Now attach the four pi flux to the electron and we turn right, right uh, tunneling in terms of the composite fermion. It's just uh, the second neighbor hopping of the composite fermion. And so once you take the uh, once you take the boundary, there is a two uh, left going mode of the composite fermion. On the other side, there is right going mode of the composite fermion. This is exactly the like the 
uh, new equal to integer quantum whole state of tuple spin. So what, 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 how do you know the charge difference uh, for, for this case, so you just uh, take the, we know that the exact expression of the bosonic field of the edge state. And uh, we know that the, those carry the charge one. So that uh, we naturally have the, the symmetric basis in the chance time theory. Okay, so now taking the same Capra uh, uh, Hamiltonian, now go to the bottom picture. So we now apply six pi flux attachment and then uh, write the, uh, the atom ending Hamiltonian for this uh, in terms of the composite boson. Now you hope the composite boson that uh, it, this is uh, just uh, okay. Looking at this interaction, just uh, uh, first you have uh, the composite boson hopping between two uh, second neighbor wires, but in between you now uh, have this kind of two theta operators. This is nothing but the quasi particle creation operator, as I showed, because it's related to bare electron box scattering operator from this. So now. The physical picture of this tunneling is now you hop the composite boson, but the in between, so you need to excite the quasi particle. And this something highlights uh, the picture in the Harden Harpen, but we are just starting from the same Hamiltonian. So now let's switch to the vortex picture of what's going on. So now, in terms of the composite boson, tunneling is written like this, and apply the vortex duality. So we now switch to the quasi-particle picture. And now the tunneling is written like this. So now quasi-particle hop between the two links, since the quasi-particle is defined on the links rather than wire. And now the quasi-particle hop between the neighboring links. But this tunneling Hamiltonian ex exactly just takes the same form as the Laughlin one-half state. So now we conclude that, OK, the, now vortex is condensed to this one half Laughlin state. And you can continue it again. So attaching the flux to the vortex and the condensed them, and you will end up with the chance time theory of the hierarchy basis. And you can actually do the similar again for two sevens. First, you do the 8 pi flux attachment to make the composite fermion. That gives the uh, integer quantum whole state of composite fermion, but with a negative magnetic field. You, if you apply six pi flux attachment composite boson, uh, electron and the composite boson, uh, now it forms the uh, vortex from the negative uh, Laughlin state, or uh, anti-vortex form the one half Laughlin state. So this gives a picture of the composite, uh, sorry, this gives a picture of the quasi hole now from the Laughlin state in this uh, two seven uh, state. But we are just starting from the same Kapura Hamiltonian in the original field. Okay, so last five minutes, maybe I can go through the, the what is more <laughs> interesting in this Kaplan approach. Uh, we just so far reviewed that what's going, uh, what is known in the literature. Okay, now we go to the particle, we define the particle transformation. Since we know that the, in the lambda level physics, once we project to the uh, single lambda level, everything, uh, there's particle transformation you can define. And uh, exactly at the filling one half, the, there is particle symmetry in the lambda level. So now just taking the mu field electron after pH tra particle transformation, you will end up with one minus new field hole, the same Laughlin state. So the idea to obtain the particle transformation is as follows. Starting from the theory of electron, now you apply two pi flux attachment, and the things are comp uh, converted to the composite boson. And apply vortex duality. But applying vortex duality, you find that vortex is now coupled to the minus, uh, bind to the minus two pi flux of vortex. That is something uh, gives you the object like the fermionic particle. Then taking that fermionic particle, you write down, theory, write down the theory. It's actually interpreted as a whole theory since there is uh, response terms corresponding to the field lambda level. So we can do this game in the couple of approach, just uh, this trans uh, sequence of transformation to the comp uh, bosonic field. And you end up with uh, uh, electronic, uh, some bosonic field corresponding to hole. This is uh, just uh, some local, uh, uh, some lo uh, some local uh, redefinition of the bosonic field. 
So then we uh, take having the couple of Hamiltonian written in terms of electron, you just uh, replace the bosonic fields for those Hamiltonian to be this whole field. Then you will obtain particle transformation. And then, okay, so doing this transformation, uh, we can easily uh, show that, uh, for example, applying the particle transformation to Laughlin state, uh, we will end up with uh, its particle conjugate with uh, a desired topological property. But uh, okay, I, I don't discuss detail. And taking a similar idea, we can also go to the little bit non-trivial example of the fraction of the state, that is 4 by 11. Uh, as we define the, the bosonic field on the holes with field under level, we can define electron, uh, bosonic field corresponding to electron in the field under level. Then we can write down the uh, Tonega Hamiltonian for the 1 plus 1 third Laughlin state. Since we know how to construct hierarchy state, so we know the couple Hamiltonian, so just take it and uh, return it down everything in the composite fermion. And what we found is, okay, it takes exactly the same form as the original one plus one third state. So it gives the interpretation of the composite fermion. Uh, it's in the, now in the one plus one third Laughlin state for the four by eleven uh, field fraction. And so I will go into more exotic stuff from now on. But uh, give me uh, five minutes, probably. Okay. And so. That we now focus on the Fling fraction of one half plus integer. Here, so the in the composite fermion picture, uh, the in a composite fermion effectively see the zero magnetic field on average, but the composite fermion can form either Fermi liquid or superconductor in this case. And then here, okay, so one half or two uh, three half, uh, there looks like uh, some compressible state, but the five half has as uh, Stephen gives a talk, so it actually gives uh, some incompressible state that might be no abelian. Okay, so I, we can actually find the uh, uh, tunneling Hamiltonian for this one over m free fraction, say the one over two for the simplest case. And just taking this Hamiltonian, the, what we can find in terms of composite fermion is that the, we can actually have uh, the tunneling Hamiltonian in which composite fermion uh, just becomes uh, the tunneling between the same branch or light, uh, same branch of right and left uh, composite fermion. But it, that kind of term cannot gap out the system, but instead uh, it just modifies the band structure of the composite fermion. So now we obtain the open frame surface for the composite fermion. So this is uh, our way to construct a composite frame liquid in this frame fraction. And the question is uh, what is happening in the one half? Okay, in short, uh, in our uh, couple of Hamiltonian, there is actually the uh, particle hole transformation we can uh, apply. And there is actually the uh, Hamiltonian in terms of the couple wire is actually symmetric under that transformation. So if you know the Halpern Lee theory, there is no uh, manifest particle symmetry in the system. But in our system, somehow we have some sort of particle symmetry. But the caveat is that this is not, uh, cannot be a symmetry in the any microscopic sense, since it involves the uh, one fixing the one wire, so left goes to right, but like right goes to the left in the neighboring wires. So this kind of symmetry ne cannot be uh, never occurs in the uh, microscopic system. Well, they, we don't know how to implement this symmetry in the microscopic system. But anyway, what we found is some particle symmetry in our model. I mean, more complicated stuff. So now we consider Papian state at filling one half. And I don't want to show the Tonnen Hamiltonian, but just pic show the picture. So as you see, that's a very complicated interaction we need. But uh, anyway, we write this interaction in terms of composite fermion. And what we can find is that uh, the now composite fermion becomes uh, like interpreted as the charge to a condensator boson with a neutral Majoran edge mode at the boundary. So this is exactly the phenomenon like the, the P plus IP superconductor, or here P minus IP uh, spinless chiral superconductor, as uh, proposed by uh, Reed and Green in the past. And this is kind of 
the uh, what's this? Yeah, and maybe and some of you know, probably. But uh, okay, so this there is actually we can construct hierarchy state about Fafian state, which is called von Darson Stringer and hierarchy. But uh, for this, we cannot condense the uh, fundamental quasi particle since it's no abelian. We cannot condense it. But taking the pair of it, we can form some abelian quasi particle. Then we can condense it. And we can do similar game in this Fafian state and then uh, uh, exciting the quasi particles above the uh, uh, charged boson condensate, and then you condense the, uh, them into the, uh, you, the some ruffling states, then you end up with the hierarchy states called the von Darson stringer hierarchy. So finally, we uh, look at the anti fafian state, since we know we have particle transformation in your system. So just apply it to the original fafian state at one half. And what we end up with, uh, we, what we ask is now is uh, how anti fafian states looks like in the composite fermion. Now, in terms of composite fermion, uh, there's neutral myonage mode, that's fine. But also, uh, now the charge sector forms the bilayer 1, 1, minus 1 state. So, what's this? So, you know, uh, if you know the bilayer 1, 1, 1 state, that's the example of the quantum firmament, quantum hole firmament, the on, on, on top of the integer quantum hole state, you have a neutral superfluid bulk. But in this 1, 1, minus 1 state, what you will have is uh, it actually not neutral superfluid, but the charged 2e superfluid in the bulk. And with that, there's neutral uh, Dirac fermion edge mode. So counting the edge mode, what we will find is that the Fafian state is corresponding to angular momentum minus 1 pairing of the composite fermion. In that anti-Fafian state, there is uh, angular momentum 3 instead. So this is consistent with the picture that is uh, proposed in the original paper. So now I stop here and uh, let's summarize my talk. So what I want to tell is that uh, actually the Kaplan construction, even though it starts from a very different place from the under level physics, but it actually encapsulates uh, the physics of the composite boson, composite fermion, like more of the physical picture of the uh, fraction of the state. And there are remaining other questions, so I want, uh, if I have a time, so I can discuss with your expert. Okay, so thank you very much. Once we uh, gapped out all the bosonic fields, yeah, that will be the uh, low energy description. Yeah. Which so, uh, so my question is, what, what can you do with coupled wire which we cannot do with Chan-Tai? What we can do? Yeah, basically, the, the, the same result should be obtained from the standard chan sign theory. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, but the effective chance sign theory is somehow just someone draws. This is effective theory. Not something derived from microscopic, microscopic theory. But here, at least, we have some certain uh, microscopic Hamiltonian, though it's not written in terms of electron, but rather the coupled wires. So if you measure something, electron in Yeah. Uh, so maybe, yeah, this is not, uh, this is not describing the physics of lambda level, so uh, the structure of excitation about the fraction of the states will be different from those in the lambda levels, but we can still do some kind, such kind of study of the dynamics of the fraction of the state, I think. Yeah, thank you. Scale dimension. Yeah, actually, if you 
just start from the free electron wires. The, the, every interaction I, sh I showed is uh, irrelevant completely. So we need to uh, introduce many, many uh, some forward scattering interaction to make them actually relevant. That's uh, highly non-trivial, and that makes it difficult to propose actual, say, lattice models for the fraction of the whole state. Yeah, for Laughlin states. It's not, there's no such straightforward relation between the, the component of the gauge field and the original uh, degrees of freedom defined on each wire, uh, I think. Okay, we can, act, in principle, we can keep track of them, but there's no uh, general relationships I cannot draw, I think. Yeah, but 